Hi there, today we're going to be chatting about laxatives. There's several things that can make someone more likely to be constipated. Poor diet with low dietary fibre, reduced mobility, dehydration, certain medications such as commonly opioids, but there's several other ones including some of the antidepressants and antipsychotics as well, and even a few of the antibiotics. The nurses will come and likely tell you that your patient is constipated and they might need some laxatives. When they do this, you're going to need to go and assess that patient. There's a few things that you need to assess when you're there. First of all, having a look at the news chart, having a look at any fluid balance charts that might be present. Have a look at their cardex as well to see if they're already on any laxatives or whether they're on any medications that might make them more constipated. You're going to want to ask your patients as well if they've had any other associated symptoms alongside their constipation. Are they nauseous? Have they been vomiting? Sometimes if they're constipated you can end up getting either urinary retention or it may make it more likely to get a urinary tract infection. Finally, a very important question to ask all your patients who say that they're feeling constipated is are they still managing to pass wind? If somebody's still managing to pass wind then it's reassuring and we know that they're not fully obstructed. It's also important when assessing constipation that you do a PR exam. This will tell you whether there's any stool sitting in the rectum and if there is any stool, whether that stool is hard or soft. Sometimes it might be appropriate to arrange an abdominal x-ray to investigate this further, although this shouldn't be done just to confirm the diagnosis of constipation. It's usually done to exclude any other more worrying causes, such as perforation, obstru complete obstruction or a possible ileus. So how do you manage constipation? Well, first of all, there are several bits of general advice that we can give to our patient. We should encourage them to try and make sure that they're eating a healthy, balanced diet and including fibre within that. Make sure that they're drinking and that they're staying well hydrated. You should encourage your patient, if at all possible, to mobilise as able, as this will help to keep the bowels more active. There's four main types of laxatives that we probably need to talk about today. The first that we'll talk about are the bulk-forming laxatives. Some examples of this can be increasing the amount of dietary fibre, such as bran, or you've also got other options such as ispagilla husk. They tend to be done more in the community, but you might see them in hospital as well. The way that these work are they're compounds that aren't easily absorbed by the body. This helps to retain water within the lumen of the bowel, which causes the stool to distend, and that distension of the lumen causes peristalsis. The next topic that we'll chat about are the osmotic laxatives. Common examples of these are laxido or lactulose. These are essentially compounds that are not well absorbed by the body and again stay within the lumen of the bowel. These have a draw on, on water which pulls in water from the surrounding walls of the bowel and keeps a larger water content within the lumen. This causes the stool to distend and again that distension encourages peristalsis. The next category we'll talk about are the stimulating laxatives, the examples of which would be Senna or Bicycodal. These work by causing irritation to the mucosal cells of the bowel. This irritation has two effects. The first is that it draws in water and some of the electrolytes into the bowel itself. And the second effect is that it directly stimulates some of the nerves of the bowel. Senna works on the colonic enteric nerves, whilst Bicycodal works on both the colonic and the rectal nerves. These laxatives usually take between 6 to 12 hours to work. The final class of laxatives that we're going to talk about today are the softeners, the most common example of which is docusate. Softeners usually take between 24 to 36 hours to take effect. As far as prescribing a laxative goes, have a look and see whether your hospital has any guidelines on this. If they do, that's usually a pretty good starting point. In general, once you've done your PR exam, you'll have an idea as to whether the patient might have hard or soft stools. If they've got soft stools, then something like a stimulant, such as Senna, might be a good place to start. If on the PR exam you find that the stool is hard, then something like an osmotic laxative or a softener might be a good place to start. If your patient is faecally loaded or you think that they're faecally impacted, then it may be an idea to try something like an enema or a suppository. The options here vary a lot, but there's a few common ones that you might want to consider. Glycerol suppositories, bisocodal suppositories, which have more of a stimulating effect. The other common enema that's often given is a phosphate enema, and this is usually used for quite hard and impacted stools. 
It's important to note that sometimes for people that are very faecally impacted, you may need to give them multiple enemas before everything starts moving. There's a couple of contraindications to giving any sort of laxatives and we should probably mention them. Anybody that you think has a complete obstruction, anyone with a paralytic ileus, anybody who's perforated, anybody with ulcerative colitis or Crohn's disease, and finally anyone that you think might have a toxic megacolon. Also bear in mind that some of these laxatives may cause disturbance in electrolyte balance as well, so you just need to use them with a wee bit of caution sometimes. If you're at all unsure, ask your senior for some advice. So when it comes to actually prescribing your laxatives, it's useful to use a mixture of preparations as they work in different ways and you can target different mechanisms of constipation. In general, you start with your PR exam and you're looking to see if you've got hard stool in the rectum or soft stool in the rectum. Then you want to choose if you want to use an oral route or a PR route. If you find you've got soft stool in the rectum and you want to choose an oral route, you'd start with an osmotic laxative like Laxido, one to three sachets twice a day, or you can use Lactulose, 10 to 20 mils twice a day. If neither of these work, you can add in a stimulant laxative like Senna at a dose of 15 to 30 milligrams at night. If you do your PR and you find hard stool in the rectum, then you would start with osmotic laxatives as well, Laxido and Lactulose at the same doses. If these don't work, then it's often useful to try Docusate as this is a stool softener, but it has some stimulant effect as well. And you can give this at 100 to 200 milligrams twice a day. If someone is quite badly constipated, they're confused, or they're unable to take oral medications, then you might want to choose a rectal route to give medications. Again, you do your PR exam. If you find you've got soft stool in the rectum, then you can try using a bisocodal suppository, which is another stimulant. You can also add glycerol suppositories, which is a mild stimulant, but mainly lubricates the stool. If this doesn't work, you can try a microenema, like a relaxer enema or a Michelet enema. If on your PR exam you find hard stool in the rectum, and again you need to use a rectal route, then you can try bisocodal suppositories and glycerol suppositories together. If that doesn't work, try your mini enema. And then, if that still hasn't worked, try a phosphate enema. One enema once a day is a good start, but you may need to use it once or twice a day to really get things moving if someone's been constipated for a while. Sometimes a mixture of oral and rectal roots can be useful to get people's bowels moving. It's important to remember that all of these laxatives will have side effects and you want your patients to be well hydrated and have normal electrolytes so that you don't cause electrolyte abnormalities or dehydration by giving them the laxatives. It's also important to go back and review laxative prescriptions and stop laxatives when they're no longer needed. Long-term use of stimulant laxatives can have an adverse effect on the bowel and may make someone laxative dependent. Laxatives shouldn't be used in people with intestinal obstruction, perforations or an ileus and they should be avoided in patients with Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. This is due to the increased risk of causing perforation in these patients. It's also worth checking the ingredients in some of your laxative preparations. For example, arachis oil enemas can be used in patients who are very constipated, but they're made of peanut oil, so double check in case your patient has a peanut allergy. 